Hey YouTube, welcome to Wiles HVAC and Stuff. If you hadn't noticed, there's a stuff behind HVAC. So, well that stuff, what we'd like to use it for is some of the things that we like to do. Uh, the people that know me out there, uh, they know that I like to make a little bit of wine for myself uh, and a couple of friends and things. Uh, so I, I do make my own homemade wine. There's a lot of videos out there and we're gonna do step by step how to make your own wine because uh, anybody can do it in your own kitchen, in your garage, whatever you want to do. It's not that hard. If I can do it, anybody can do it. Uh, but what we're doing today is a very short video. It is nothing more than bottling the wine itself. Uh, so we, I did this happen to be ready to go right now today. Uh, so we're going to make a video of it. Uh, the wine itself has already been through all its processes. It is ready to go in the bottle. Uh, we've been through all the fermentation uh, processes all the different steps, stages, everything like that. The wine has had all of its additiv additives added to it and it's ready to go to the bottle. Uh, the bottles themselves have all been cleaned. We double scrub bottles and then sanitize uh, just to make sure they're clean because that is the number one thing with any homemade wine or homemade liquor of any sort. Everything has to be clean. If anything is not sanitized or not clean or any little bit of anything in there, you have all kinds of problems. There's a million different varieties of things that can go wrong and things that can go bad, and we'll probably have videos on that someday. But for right now, trust me, make sure everything's clean. Uh, as far as actual sanitizer, I use One Step Cleaner. Uh, this is what I've always used. It's just my preference. There's a million different kinds out there. Uh, you can buy this online, uh, Amazon. I mean, yeah, everybody knows I'm a big Amazon user. Uh, you can buy it there. You can buy it at Fryer Tux. Uh, there's uh, 5,001 different uh, web stores out there that sell all the different kind of things like that as far as making wine. So uh, get it out there, whatever. Uh, so let's put some wine in the bottles. Uh, some of these we've already started. We already have some in a bottle and ready to go, that kind of thing. And then we've got this one here. We've already got our siphon started. So we start our siphon. All we got to do is fill the bottle. That's it. And why do we stand there and wait? We can enjoy some of our pear wine. And I'd like to take the opportunity to uh, express my gratitude to the, our friends of ours that gave us these beautiful wine glasses. We're about to overflow a wine bottle here. So we stop that siphon just shy of the top. That's all you gotta do. So now we've done that. So we fill the bottle, we take it from our, our secondary fermenter, put it into our wine bottle itself. Normally you stop it just a little shy of the bottle. Uh, we have one already prepared here just to make sure uh, but what you want to do is stop it right about the neck of the bottle uh, you don't want to leave too much air in there for one it's not good for the wine two you can uh, push the the cork out there's a lot of different reasons why you want to leave it right about the neck of the bottle itself there so that bottle is ready as far as the corking I use a pretty simple corker. Uh, they make a million different kinds out there. This is a very sim simple, inexpensive corker. Uh, I think I bought mine on Amazon. You can get the same thing at Fryer Tux, uh, all the different web stores out there. Uh, the, there's a lot of different places you can get this. I enjoy this corker, it works very well. It's very simple, inexpensive, that kind of thing. Uh, all you gotta do is, when the arms come down, pushes the plunger down, etc. The corks themselves, you need to so soak the corks before they go in the bottle. I use a number nine cork. Uh, it's already been soaked, it's been sanitized. I use the same one-step sanitizer because you don't want any dirty imperfections on that cork when you put it at the end of the bottle. So we're not gonna use that one. <laughs> so I do have more, everything's all right. So we've got a new cork that's already been sanitized. We'll leave the one on the floor alone. Uh, as far as the corker itself, put it on the bottle. Make sure it's good and center. Put your cork on there. Center it as well as possible. Bring your plunger down. Make sure it's centered because you want to make sure it's driving straight down into the bottle. A little bit of pressure. Now, you have a perfect cork. Nothing comes out just like it's supposed to. You have a bottle of pear wine that is 100% ready to go. So, thank you and God bless.